Let's look at this nice combinatorics problem from the 1996 Putnam exam. So let's suppose that each of 20 students has made a choice of zero to six courses from six courses that have been offered. So if you want to think about this as like there are 20 math majors at a college perhaps, and there are six upper division math classes being offered, and well, the math majors all decide to take between zero or six of these courses. And then the goal here is to prove or disprove the following statement. And that statement is that there must be five students and two courses so that all five students have chosen both of these courses or neither of these courses. So let's see kind of what it would take to prove this statement and what it would take to disprove this statement before we launch into our solution. So to prove this statement, it would probably be some sort of pigeonhole principle argument. And then to disprove this statement, we would simply have to give an example of really a course schedule for each of the students that exhibits this property, or the opposite of this property, I should say. So the fact that we would have, let's see, two courses, and those two courses would never have five students taking them and also five students not taking both of them. So probably a good strategy for all of these, especially when it's kind of building an example, is to look for the example first. And if it seems extremely difficult to find the example, then you're probably going to want to go down the other path. In other words, here we'll look at the disproof example. And if it seems hard to find the disproof example, then the statement is probably true and we will prove it. So there's several numbers over here and probably if we can cook up some sort of example, it'll be built out of some coincidences between these numbers. Okay, so now let's notice that if we were to try to find a counterexample to this statement, then that counterexample would kind of like spread the courses out among the students in some sort of even way. So if you think about spreading the courses out among the students in an even way, well, since they're choosing between zero and six courses, well, perhaps they would choose the number right in the middle there. So they would choose each to take three courses. And so that's built out of our first goal to find a counterexample. And then the reasoning that that counterexample would be maybe not all clumped up. It would be some sort of even spread of the courses. Okay, so let's say that is uh, towards our guess here. So each student takes three courses. Okay, now I guess from there, we'd like to see how many three course schedules are there because, well, if each student takes three courses, we've got to have some sort of idea of how many different ways each of the students can take these three courses. But how many three course schedules are there? Well, definitely there's a number for that, and that number is a binomial coefficient. So we've got six courses, we're choosing three of them. That's the same thing as taking a three element subset of a six element set. So let's maybe note that. So there are six choose three, uh, three course schedules. But let's calculate what this six choose three is. So let's recall that it's gonna be a descending product of three terms on the numerator, starting with six, so six times five times four, over three factorial, so three times two times one. But let's simplify kind of in the middle here and observe that this three times two is equal to six, so we can get rid of that, leaving us with five times four. Whoa, so there's our numerical coincidence. There are 20 three course schedules, and that's gonna allow us to spread these three course schedules out evenly. And, well, we didn't a priori know that we would be able to do that, but now that we've seen this numerical coincidence, we can. And this maybe lends even more evidence to this disproof 
um, strategy here or this look for a counterexample, as well as this counterexample being some sort of even spread of the courses. Okay, so let's say this. So let's say each student chooses a different set of three courses. And well, since 20 isn't really that big, I think we could probably just do this very, very explicitly and see exactly what's going on here. So let's maybe say that the students are numbered. The students are numbered 1 to 20. And maybe the courses have names A, B, C, D, E, and F. So those are our six courses. And now simply what we can do is build course schedules for each of these students. So one through five here, and then six through 10 here, and then let's jump to having all those course schedules on the board. Okay, so there we've got an enumeration of everyone's course schedule. So observe, I did it in a systematic way to make sure I didn't list two twice or that I would list all of them. Okay. So now let's do an example. So let's pick a pair of courses. So at random, let's pick B and D. And then after picking B and D, let's find all of the students that are taking both courses B and D and the students taking neither courses B nor D. Okay, so let's see. This person two is taking course B and course D. And then let's see, where's the next one? So I think it's going to be over here. So this person over here, person 11, is taking course B and course D. And there are two more. Person 14 and person 15 are both taking course B and D. But notice that's only four. So we did not achieve five students taking this course. Now, let's see if we achieved, you know, five students not taking this course. So let's find all of the students taking neither B nor D. So let's see, the first two people come in a row, it's person six and person seven. And then the next person is person 10. And then let's see, all of these that start with B obviously can't work. And here we have C, D, C, D. Here we have a D. So the last person is person 19. So check it out, we didn't achieve this goal over here of having five students not taking this course either. And now, well, I guess there are two ways to finish this off. We could write down a general argument with maybe, maybe some general names for the courses, and we will do that. Or we could make some sort of argument where courses B and D were chosen at random. And so you could just have a renaming of the courses and achieve the same kind of thing. It would be like some sort of permutation of this list right here. That being said, let's look at an argument that we could have done actually before writing down this enumeration. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take an arbitrary pair of courses, I'll call them X and Y, from the set A, B, C, D, E, F. So in other words, from the set of courses that we have available. Okay. And well, now let's observe that we can count up how many people have this schedule right here. So by this schedule right here, they're taking course X, they're taking course Y, and well, they're taking some other course. But this is a fairly easy thing to count up because notice there are four choices for this remaining choice meaning that there are four people with this type of schedule. Remember that uh, everyone is taking a different schedule, so they have to achieve all of the remaining courses right here. Okay, so there are four people taking that schedule. Well, that immediately shows that we've come up with a situation where we do not have five students taking both of one set of courses. Now we just have to show that we don't have five students taking neither, and we can do that by counting up the other situations. So now let's look at the total number of people that are taking this schedule right here. So course X and then two other courses. But we can figure this out as well, because notice 
this is going to be, well, a binomial coefficient. We can't choose course y, so that means we've got four courses to choose from because we can't choose y, then we would be this type of person. And so we've got to choose two of them. So there are four choose two total choices for these remaining courses. But how many does that make? That makes six people. So six people take X and two other courses, neither of them being course Y. And then, well, we've got this other type that's taking Y and two other courses, but not X. But pretty much for the same reason as this X blank blank, we have six people under this scenario. Okay, but now notice that that leaves only one possibility left, and that possibility left is people neither X nor Y. But notice there are 20 total students, and now we can subtract four, and then we can su subtract six and six again, just clearing out all of those possibilities up there, and, well, we get the number four. So that means there are four people taking neither X nor Y. So, I think these two approaches are nice. This concrete approach where we make the full list is definitely satisfying. And then this way right here where we do a little bit of a counting argument is also satisfying. But let's all observe that it's built off of this idea of looking for a counterexample in this case that spread all of the courses out and then recognizing some numerical coincidences. And that's a good place to stop.